In today's video, I'm gonna take you through everything that you need to use an external microphone with a DJI Osmo Action 4. Gonna test out a few different microphones throughout the video, gonna show you every cable, every connector, gonna show you some camera cages, some really cool things that you can do to make sure that you get your audio levels set perfect. Anyway, timestamps below, let's go. And one of the greatest things about the DJI Osmo Action 3 and 4 is that you don't need to buy a media mod. You don't need to have one to use external microphones, but there are a couple of tips and tricks that I'm going to recommend for you to get the best experience before we talk about plugging microphones in and what sort of cables that you need. Now, I've just got to the point of about the fifth time I'm trying to record this now. Someone is using an angle grinder upstairs, upstairs, outside, and someone's making noise upstairs. So I'm just going to continue. So if there's background noise, I will try and remove it because I want to get all of this nice stuff covered um, and for everyone that watched the unboxing and first tested this video and left a comment and subscribed thank you very much and if you didn't watch that video go and watch it and make sure you subscribe if you like this video anywho let's go on to some tips and tricks so the first one is although you don't need to buy a media mod a benefit about the media mod is it does have a microphone jack input that's obviously for gopro you can't use it with dji and it does have a hot shoe slash cold shoe. I always forget which one connector on the top. So I would recommend, especially if you want to use a little shotgun microphone, and I will show you why I recommend it for wireless microphones in a second as well, getting a cage. And the one I recommend is the small rig one. So this is the one designed for the Osmo Action 3, but they're the same size, so it fits. Really nice little cage here. You can access your battery your sd card magnetic on both sides as well so it is got it is magnetic on the actual cage as well so you can still use it there quick release as well on both sides and this is the only one that does have quite a big gap here so you can still use a dji microphone with this i think it's the only cage that does it that actually has a big enough gap so you can use it and i have removed the little battery cover today then now as for the next tip this is a very important tip that if you are using shotgun microphones that we're going to talk about in a minute chances are because if i just show you here you might see as i dip there i don't know if you can see it but as i dip down there right in the center there I think my light's catching it but you can end up seeing this and especially by the time you use a wind filter this is going to be on full show because the camera has got such a wide angle. So there's a couple of things that I recommend. Um, I'm going to put links to everything in the description for you as well. First one is this little thing from like newer, but loads of other brands do it as well. And that is just a simple little hot shoe riser there. So that is going to step your microphone up a little bit and, you know, just get it out of the way for when using a wind filter, but sometimes your microphone might be too big. So something like a video mic NTG, Deity mic and stuff. So I've actually found this little thing, this little hot shoe bar from Movo. Um, and I find that this works really well and it's actually got a really nice grip on it as well. If you're just for any camera stuff, you know, when you screw these down, they just don't grip to your cages and cameras, but this one grips really nice and it will look quite janky, but it allows you to then what that allows now is for you to put your mic back a little bit further. Like I said, it does look stupid, but it will stop you getting your shotgun microphone, you know, in sight and in the way. So I will put all of that in the description for the affiliate links. Please do use them if you do buy any of that stuff, because it does help me out even on small accessories. Any money is better than no money when you're a small YouTube channel. So those are the two tips. I know you probably want to hear the microphones, but there's actually one other tip, because one of the most annoying things is here and you won't see it on screen at the moment because I haven't got a microphone plugged in. But when I show you the levels in a second, it's not really you go into mic gain settings and there's no levels. And it's just a little microphone which goes from white to red. It doesn't really give you any indication of what your input light is like and your volume. So I have actually got a little workaround for this. I um, mean, it doesn't give you exact levels, but it's definitely more helpful and it will make more sense as we go further along in the video. So I'm just connecting on the DJI Mimo app. As you can see there, you can now see the camera. Eee. But if I press record, if I press record now, you can see that there, you actually get a fairly decent microphone. Let me just get some focus there. Focus. You can see there, you get a bit more of an indication of what your actual mic level is. Don't know how clear that's going to be, but 
yeah, I find this really useful when trying to set up your external microphones because you basically want to be about 75% of the way there. And I just find it a bit easier. So those are the tips and tricks out of the way. How do we plug microphones in? What are the options? Well, you just use the USB port. Um, and that allows to use USB microphones. You can use USB connectors. And I'm just going to go through with all of those now. So let's just start off with something like my favorite wireless microphone system. So this is the Full Aim X5. And we can take this USB output. So I can just plug that in there. And now if I start talking into the other microphone here. And this is where you can see where we've just got that little microphone input. I'm hoping this has got focus because it's a bit hard for me to see now. I'll get some B-roll if not, but you can just see all we've got is this little microphone option. And it's just, there's no really realizing where the levels are. So then you can go into your settings here and you can go into the microphone settings and then you get your option for your if you want it to be stereo or mono, stereo is good if we're using two of these microphones. And then there is the gain setting as well. So you can set that gain, but there's just no levels. It'd be so much better if there was, you know, just show me the DB levels in here. Kind of like when you click on a Sony camera, when you go to mic level and it actually shows you the main levels that you're getting, but you can switch between stereo and normal. And it's just about finding your settings here. And as you can see there, that does look certainly janky. And I think it looks really janky with the DJI mic on the side. So cable that I'm going to recommend to you for if you're using wireless microphones which support USB output. I've got hundreds of cables sat here is this little one here. This is the little Amazon Basics USB-C cable. I think that one's about three, four pounds. So link to that in the description. And as you can see there, it looks all right. I'm trying to find a little coiled one of these. If anyone's found a little coiled USB cable, it's not like a big, thick keyboardy style one. Let me know because I'd be very interested. But that's one option you've got there. So the other option as well is you can also plug the Rode. This is one that we are going to test for you in a minute so you can hear the differences between the two. The Rode video mic go to is a USB microphone and you can use it as a 3.5 millimeter cable microphone as well. So we've got the USB port around that side. I haven't quite got a cable for that one yet. So I've got to order it for this video, but I'll put a link into the description for the one that I would be using with this. But you can just use the one that comes with the Action Free. Loop that around there somewhere. Plug that in. Come on. And there we go again. So we have, if we slide that up and point that towards me. You can see there, we now have the Rode mic plugged in getting gain level in and um, let's go do some tests on it. So right now you're listening to my favorite budget lavalier microphone, the Full Aim X5 plugged in to the Action 4 using the Amazon Basics USB-C cable. So I've got it mounted on top of the cage as I would have shown earlier in the video. Um, I've got the gain set to three on the little Full Aim and then plus six on the Osmo Action 4. Um, one thing I really like about this as well is that I've got it in stereo mode and I'm running a safety track on the Full Aim X5. I would definitely check out my review of this microphone. You can pick it up for, I don't know, just over a hundred pounds. Comes with two of these little microphones, got noise cancellation built into it if you want to use it. It's a little bit naff, but you can plug in lavaliers to it. It's got built-in recording, USB-C output, and comes with a charging case. So um, that is a bit windy today, and this is what the Full Aim X5 sounds like on the DJI Osmo Action 4. And now you're listening to the Rode Video Mic Go 2, and just like the Full Aim X5 was one of my favorite budget lavalier microphones, this is one of my favorite budget shotgun microphones. I am having to use the little spacer on this because I have put a wind filter on the end of it. It's not the official wind filter though. So if any wind comes through, I wouldn't judge the official one. I've literally just put a furry that I found that fits over the end of the foam on it. But I've got the USB-C plugged in, just left it in stereo mode because there's no re reason for me to change it. Um, but you could run it in mono if you want. Um, and yeah, USB-C um, plus 8 dB on the gain, and that's given me a nice healthy level. So what I'm gonna do now is just, you can see that as I tilt forward, you can see even with the step up and with it going as far back as it can go on the mount, it is gonna still show up 
on the um, Osmo Action 4. Um, but if you're just doing a little walk and vlog, as you can see like I'm doing now, even if you just do a slow dip like that, it won't show up. It's just about to rain. I suppose we're gonna see how waterproof it is. Um, but yeah, if you just do a slow little walk or just do like, you know, just be a bit aware about your tilts or even if you have it wide, just crop it out when you do a big tilt. Um, you're not gonna really see this microphone on it. Now, it's not just USB shotgun microphones or USB lavalier microphones that you can use with this. You can also use something like a Zoom F3 as well, audio interface. I did use mine with the Osmo Action 3. Um, there is a couple of drawbacks with that though. So you can use a powered USB audio interface into it. And the drawback with using the Zoom F3 is that it only outputs 24 bit into the Action 4. So you don't get to use its 32 bit. And when you're using it as a USB audio interface, you can't record internally either. That being said, I do plan to make a bougie little mic set up for this. So I will post that video at some point. I wanna plug my little tiny Sheps microphone into the Action 4. So what if you don't have a USB microphone, like if you haven't got a shotgun microphone that hasn't got a USB output on it, or if your little wireless system doesn't allow a USB output, what are your options then? Pretty easy, you just need some adapters. So you can use USB-C to either TRS or TRRS adapters, depending on what type of microphone you're gonna be plugging into it from the USB. I've had no issues using converter cables either. So I've used um, like the Rode SC7 cable, which uses a TRS to TRRS connection. I've used, um, which we'll use in a second, um, the one that comes with the Sennheiser MKE200. This would be my go-to recommendation for a short shotgun microphone to put on an action camera because it doesn't protrude over the screen. You do see it a touch with the wind filter on, but that's only if you're doing like fast tilts up and down. But for walking vlogging, it's perfectly fine. So one cable that I would recommend that I haven't got here, I mean, um, like converter cable that I would recommend that I know a lot of people use. I believe it's the one from Movo, which is a USB-C to TRS connection. So if you've bought any kind of on-camera microphone, either whether it's a shotgun or a wireless, anything like that, that's the one that I would recommend that you get. There's a link for it in the description there, but I thought I would just test it out with this one because this is the one that I have for my iPad and yeah, it seems to have worked fine and we'll do some comparison tests between them. So then you just need the right cable. So I'm gonna plug the TRRS into this. So, and then just plug that in the end there. As you can see now, we get the little microphone um, light come up there and it is showing that we are getting some gain in. Um, probably don't need to go to 12. It's just because I'm holding this a little bit further away from me. Well, not further away than I would do for vlogging, but I'm conscious that I've got a microphone in between me. So I don't want to shout too loud to get this one going. But you can see that as I tap there, we got some gain coming in. You'll hear this microphone in a minute and we'll talk about it a bit more. But this is the one that I actually found that I really like. Okay, this is the cable that I would definitely recommend just having as a little cable to have in your bag. So this is by Hollyland that make the Lark wireless microphones. And this is their cable which takes a 3.5 millimeter TRS into USB-C. So that's for like, the, it's their cable that they sell for smartphones essentially. The only thing I've noticed is to sometimes it doesn't recognize it or it doesn't seem to get going when it's from a cold boot of the camera, which can be a little bit annoying if you just turned it off and you need to get some stuff. But you can see there, again, we've got some gain coming through on this little bit here. Um, and I just really like that because it's a really nice small cable. Um, one of the things, again, with this being so wide angle, if you've got any wires sticking out the front or anything, they are going to show, especially when you're doing like faster left, right, up and down pan movements. So those are going to show in your field of view. But I generally crop this in a little bit because I find that it's too wide for vlogging. And this now is the Sennheiser MKE200. And this is the microphone that I would recommend for you to get with an Action 4. Let me just do the tilt test straight away. You can see, you can't see the little furry on it and that's without using the step up as well. So I've not got the little step up set up. Now, right now I'm using the included cable that comes with the MKE200. So I'm using the one that's got a TRS connection that plugs directly into the microphone. There's quite a bit of wind there as well. So I imagine it's gonna be picking that up. And then that goes to a TRRS connection into the Apple USB-C to TRRS adapter. Bit of a mouthful there saying all of that stuff 
but this is what it sounds like with this cable it is okay it's just that you kind of have to manage the wire a little bit otherwise it can pop up on screen which can be a little bit annoying on screen um, in the lens um, but yeah this is the MKE 200 let's test it out with a cable that I recommend for it and this now is the MKE 200 plugged in with the Hollyland cable um, so this cable is 10 pounds I think it's an absolute bargain for what it is there's quite a lot of side wind hitting the microphone now so <laughs> let's see how the wind filter does but I just wanted to see if you could hear a difference with it now one thing I've noticed with this microphone is I wouldn't really class it as a shotgun at all um, although it looks like it's got a little interference tube in there I don't think it's doing it it seems to pick up a hell of a lot more ambient noise than other small shotgun microphones now the thing you need to know as well with these smaller microphones again i probably wouldn't even class a lot of them as shotgun i class them more as directional because the interference tubes on all of them are so short even something like a video mic ntg that it doesn't really give you masses of background rejection it, it certainly helps um but yeah that's one thing that i have found with this microphone the other thing i found with this microphone as well is the eq on it it's very bass like if you have a look at the frequency response it almost like looks like it has a bit of a high pass filter built in so for the intro and outro of this video take another listen to it because i'm gonna eq a little bit of bass in and just make it sound a little bit nicer and once you've done all of that i kind of actually prefer it over the road a little bit of noise isolation as well and it does give a really nice sound so yeah i'm absolutely loving the dji osmo action 4 when it comes to audio it's just so much better for me than the gopro i mean you're taking something that's already a hot device in the gopro that's pretty sweaty and then putting some plastic around it that's making it even more sweaty just to plug your microphones in it's not really for me of course yeah i did have to buy the cage to put it on but i'd much rather have something metal that keeps my device cool and keeps it protected from drops and bangs as well even though this thing is built like an absolute tank anyway that's it from me today let me know if you want me to test any other mics with the DJI Osmo Action 4. Make sure you leave a like, make sure you subscribe and I'll be back with some more content very soon.